So a study found that people with chronic inflammation have a 60 to 100% increased risk for infections. Which, if you first hear it, sounds counterintuitive, right? Because if anything, inflammation should protect us from infections. That's what inflammation is there for. Usually when we get an infection by bacteria or viruses, our body mounts an inflammatory response to fight off these invaders. However, surprisingly, chronic inflammation makes us more susceptible to infections. So when you are getting a cold uh, like five times a year, it might actually be due to chronic inflammation. And in this video, I want to talk about why this is probably the case. In fact, I have found about three reasons why chronic inflammation makes us more susceptible to infections. The first two are really based on scientific literature and papers I've read. And the third one is, I have to admit, a little bit more about the uh, personal theory I have. Okay, let's jump right into it. So what chronic inflammation actually leads to is inappropriate inflammation when we have an infection. And this is very nicely illustrated by a study that actually did not look at chronic inflammation itself, but at chronic stress. And I hope you stick with me here because it will make sense in the end. So what this study found was that people with chronic stress developed something that's called stress resistance. And they also found that those people were then much more susceptible to, get, to catch a cold or uh, any kind of infection. In fact, the study also included some randomized control, meaning they took people, either people with high levels of stress or no stress at all, and infected them with the virus. And what they found that the people with high stress levels were more susceptible to the virus. And what they found was that it was not the stress levels itself, but rather that these uh, people had a stress resistance. So this is important because uh, our body, like insulin resistance, can develop a resistance to almost everything as long as things are high. And the same is true for stress, and sometimes we need stress. Stress actually suppresses inflammation short term. And the same is probably also true for inflammation. So if inflammation is always high, our body can develop some kind of stress resist or uh, inflammation resistance. And this can always then lead to in, an inappropriate inflammation. It's quite a mouthful, but I hope you get the point. Meaning that when there's always stress, when there's always inflammation, we develop either stress resistance or an inflammation resistance. And these, of course, are closely interconnected. Okay, then the next point is that chronic inflammation can lead to exhausted immune cells. So our immune cells are not perfect. They actually have a limit as much as we have a limit. Just imagine you working out for two hours. You are simply exhausted afterwards, right? Same is true for our immune cells. If our immune cells are somewhere recruited to the site of infection, they can become exhausted because they work and work and they overwork. Work, 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 work. And um, studies really found that uh, if people have chronic infections and thereby chronic inflammation, they see that the immune cells become exhausted and there are certain markers how you can measure for exhausted immune cells. And this simply made the people then more susceptible to further infections. So this all makes sense. Um, also very interesting, which is a side topic, the novel coronavirus also leads to exhaustion of immune cells, which is the reason why many old people seem to be pretty susceptible to this virus as the immune system becomes, uh, so to say, weaker while we grow old, but also chronic inflammation becomes more common when we grow old. Okay, then I think these points really make sense. We host an um, inappropriate immune response, either too strong or too weak. And depending on what kind of infection we get, we also need to have different immune responses. So not um, every immune response is suitable for every kind of 
pathogen, virus, bacteria, or whatever. Okay, so this can go wrong with chronic inflammation. And then chronic inflammation simply exhausts our immune cells. They need to rest, we have to give them rest. And then a, thing, a little bit of a personal theory, and it probably also plays into the first and second point, is that immune cells are kind of distracted. I know we have so many, and for some it might sound like an unlikely theory, but the thinking I have behind it is simply that when we get an infection somewhere in our body, we want to have a pretty local and strong response. If we get an infection in our lung, we want to have immune cells coming there. We want to have our B and T cells coming from our lymph nodes to the lung to help them clear the infection there. However, if we have chronic inflammation somewhere else going on, for instance in the gut, which is a common site for chronic inflammation, maybe the immune cells are simply too distracted to help out somewhere else. All right, that's all I wanted to talk about. I hope you also find that this makes sense and I hope that you be really aware that chronic inflammation can make you more susceptible to other infection, viruses, bacteria, fungi, doesn't matter. Okay, here are two more videos that you might find helpful when it comes to inflammation. Thank you for watching. Please consider giving this video a like as this tells the YouTube algorithm to share to more people. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time.